before you work on your furnace make sure you turn off your circuit breaker disconnect your furnace wire connected to the outlet for extra safety and also turn off your gas Okay, I'm changing the motor because it seems like it's a bad motor after 33 years and it's making noise and the set, set screw is loose and it's very dirty inside because I put my finger try to spin it my hand is already full of dirt so first of all you open this up and you will be hoping by Three screw, one screw right here, and two screw right there. So you just peel this off. The railing is basically just pushing, so you have two slot. So you pie this out this way, and you will come out. So after that, you will see a full pipe. After that, you have a screw right here, so you remove it, and then the full pipe will be sitting like this inside so basically you remove the connection right there and either you can wherever easy for you can slide this way out or slide this way out so so this is the full pipe inside it wasn't that dirty and it's still in good condition so all you have to do is mango around this connection it will come out so after that you have one screw here holding this bracket so as long as this one is out then I tackle the motherboard I mean not motherboard the control board uh, make sure I write down all the all the wire connection G I write it down here G C R Y W and also I have my diagram here which is, uh, I put down all the necessary wiring and there's two thermostat wire. So I wire it all down here. And then I'm going to remove this, uh, just the connection. I mean, just the uh, nut connection. I'm not going to remove the wire and hang it somewhere safe and then I can remove two nut on the motor one nut over there one nut down there and I'm going to slide it out and see what's wrong with the motor please stay tuned this nut is holding this square bracket so as long as we move it it should be slide out and more room And as you can see, I also put some paint over here, yellow paint and orange paint, so I can identify the screw later on. And after you remove the screw, there's two or three hinge over there. So you all you have to do is push the push this bracket to the left, and you will come out to go this way, and you will come out this way. And now we can just slide it out. Okay, I also removed this panel. I just put it this way. So I'm going to disconnect this one, this wire connection, which I just pulled out. Same on the motherboard connection. It should be just pull it to the right side. Uh, I remove now because right now the motherboard is attached to the uh, furnace so it's stronger to hold on. I already write down all the numbers. Uh, basically there's two wire. This, this wire only have two connections. White to the C and red to the Y. 
So if you look this way, they have marking over there. And I also put on top of it, so it's easy to reference. GCRYW and on the five wire, the first one is blue to this G. Uh, then after that, the brown to the C, and then the red to the R, and then the yellow to the Y, and finally the white to the W. And on the two wire, the white to the C, and the red to the Y. And that's all. And after that, I believe I can remove these two screw and and this should remove the motherboard and I also should remove these two connections uh, to the first and the third slot is empty so the red is on the second and on the fourth is the black and the last one on the fifth position is the white so so the first and third slot is not used red to the R which is the second slot black to the fourth slot and white to the fifth and after that my plan is to don't touch anything and put the motherboard on top of it. I just make sure there's nothing drop on it or I'll move over here. It depends on uh, how long is the wire. Please stay tuned. the motherboard so last is the motherboard I just pull out a little bit so I will be very careful just strictly pull it out and then after that I'm going to remove the top screw holding the motherboard okay the connection to the the harness to the motherboard is out so I believe only this three screw or two screw is holding it so as long as this one is out I can remove the screw here and another screw up there which is holding the motor and the bore and I'm going to strictly just put it out this way and the and after that I just put the compare the motor and based on the diagram make sure it's the same and all the connections should be color coded so I just put back or connect back the same way okay after I remove the top two screw it's still holding on and the reason for that is you have to tap here which is go on the motherboard and that's two tap right there so and, uh, and also that's one screw here 
holding on it. So just be aware of that. So that's a tap, nothing to do, but the screw is holding it. And now the motherboard is out. I just have to find a good position to locate in a safe location, put it in a safe location so I can remove the motor. So I'm going to pull it out now. Just right now, just remove the two screw holding the frame. Very easy. The bottom one, the screw is stripped, so I'm going to use a 516 or 8 millimeter. The top one is fine. Okay, everything, the two screws is removed. I'm going to just light it out, see what happens. It may be hard. Well, it haven't been moved for 33 years, I believe. And I make sure I don't touch that Why over there. So, let's see. Wish me luck. So it's halfway. I just want to tape it. Right now it's halfway. Okay, the motor is half out. Now I wonder how difficult to put it back. Because right now I just drop it. But when I move in, I need to lift it up in a very odd angle. So let's see. Worst come worst, I just call the professional. Okay, the motor finally out. This is all 33 years and the motor is still working except the cause of the noise is because of this. Because the set because the set screw is loose and they did drop it down and when they drop it down look at this. I almost make it not to touch this motor if this screw is a little bit uh, shorter and I did try to lift it up a little bit it's about one centimeter as you can see see but I can't lift it up so if I lift it up and turn just fine but it's hard to work inside there edit so my suggestion is if you remove this and this motor is old I will change the wheel and also the motor at the same time it's just too much work okay right now I'm waiting for the new motor and this square cage come in then I work on it now I'm just going to study the wiring so somehow for 33 years this set screw get loose so right now I'm using some penetration oil to loosen this up so I can replace the motor and the wheel together as you can see, the position has been moved. You see a little bit circle over there? That's the old marking of that set screw. So for some reason, you drop and drop, and now you drop to the real bottom and hitting the motor mount screw. So right now, my issue is to how to remove that since there's so many rush on it. So I need to get a puller. 
what I did is I put a wrench on the slot there's a slot right here and then just rotate the cage at the bottom wiggle it a little bit but if you plan to use the same cage I would be very careful not to bend anything but I have a new one coming so I just turn this and eventually that one is loose if not you can use a torch put the torch right here to put the heat on it and also if you plan to replace the motor or the cage then that will fine otherwise it may be too much heat but uh, when you have that situation most of the time you will remove replace the motor and the cage or the cage so you can use a torch and at the end you can buy one of the puller just for this kind of purpose they grab on it and then they have a screw to screw in and then they will pull it out I have the puller but uh, since this, in this case I don't need to use it I'm not going to uh, uh, find the box and, and take it out and use it that kind of thing because it's already out so I'm going to turn this over and let the gravity do the work so your friend is penetration oil a wrench keep turning left and right and eventually hopefully it's loose if not use the torch to heat it right over there so the rust will be loosening up because of the heat but be careful because uh, if you plan to keep the motor and cage uh, you may cause some damage to it but that's the only way and at the end you can use that by the puller it's only 20 30 bucks um, I think if I ask someone to come in and do this um, at least a thousand bucks I guess I will I will take a look later on in the internet so if this still stuck so what you can do is put a wrench over there holding it my joint just jar holding it and then keep spinning this left and right okay and then eventually this one will come loose and eventually this one will come loose Holding this and keep spinning. And while you're spinning, you move back and forth so eventually you will come up. Okay, after that, four nuts, and uh, I'm going to take it out and double check the motor compared to the new motor. And after that, I just probably cut this around here so I can wire nut back to the new motor. Okay, after that, I mark the position, the line, and the height of the old bracket. And the motor is the same brand and model, so it should be the same. So after that, I'm going to put the bracket in the same position or the same height, just like the old one. And you're losing this using one wrench and then the other one so keep turning and then the motor will drop and then you just move the bracket over and I will also double check 
all the model number and especially the wire make sure they don't change they should be indicate exactly the same way the white, the brown, everything this, this is the new one so if you look at your old one, you should be the same based on the diagram same diagram this is the old one Okay, based on the old model, the bracket is right covering the label right in the middle. So I'm going to do the same. The label is right there. I'm going to do the same and after that I measure a little bit. And on the bracket there's a little slot right here. It's a little bit lower. That's where you put it. Okay, finally. It's so difficult. So basically I put a hole on the box and put it upside down because the bracket keeps shifting. So right now I measure it everywhere is about the same, about two inch hitting that. And uh, somehow they have to redesign this kind of thing because it's it's keep dropping or not level things like that. So so this part is done, so I just need to wire back, cut that one, and color to color and connect back. And I'm still waiting for the, uh, for the wheel to arrive, so I can finish the job. Okay, there's one screw here. You can remove it and one at the bottom. So after that you can pull this panel out a little bit, and you can remove the, uh, the case. Okay, I still cannot remove it because this two screw uh, nut is holding this piece. Because some of the motor you can jack up a little bit and you will tilt, but not this one. So I have to remove this two. Okay, finally remove this one. Basically, it's two screw right here, and now you can take off the wheel. Okay, when the wheel is out, I just clean it. There's a lot of dirt inside, so this is the best way to just use a wet to wet it and use a vacuum to vacuum all out. So this is the only time you do it. While you're cleaning, you also should inspect the bait. They should be all straight, otherwise they will cause imbalance. So in my case, I find something is a little bit not straight. Forgot where I see it. Give me one minute. Okay, right here. So from here, watch it's this one. They are not. They are not quite straight. Other than that, it's okay. So those are the paint. Anyway. Alright, the new motor come in, but you see now you take a hit over there. So uh, and this is this model number. And it is supposed to be uh, Okay, the motor arrived. That's the uh, part number. Uh, but it seems like you take a hit right there. So hopefully it didn't go to the uh, wheel. So first of all, we compare. It looks the same except this one have two set screw, which is good. And that is the. Uh, model number and that is the uh, installation instruction and this one it seems like it's OEM original so it's uh, 
89. May 89. This original. But this one only have one set screw. Maybe they modify it. You go out the model, keep dropping down or not. Tight. So I already do all the wiring, basically color to color. And uh, and the, this is the new motor. And I just cut the old motor in the middle. And this one is still good. I use it as a backup then. Uh, because it's only the set screw is loose and uh, you hit the bottom of the case. So I clean this up. I put the new wheel in over there which is brand new and it should be much quieter. Just for your information you will see some crib right here and right here a little bit clip and same on the mo whole motor those are for balancing so don't touch it so you will be just like just like the wheel balance on the car so so this one I only see one but on the old one I see two together so I'm going to keep this for backup just in case something go wrong and uh, no heat during winter I can put this back so just put it back and before I tight the set screw it should be kind of in the middle so and you can't and then your set screw should be on the top so as long as you move this in and Tighten the set screw and we are ready to put it back. So put back just how I remove it, put back four screw here and after that we turn the wheel on the side to set the set screw. The wheel should be in the middle and we go from there. So when you tighten the bolt just do a pattern and also don't tight tie up really tight as long as they go in tie up a little bit all around so eventually you uh, all will go in perfect and uh, then you're supposed to change the capacitor but I changed it already so I'm not going to touch it I just want to make sure the problem is the wheel and the uh, Basically, it's the wheel and the set screw. And the hole is not lined up, don't worry. You have a little bit room to move because of the rubber and the bracket. You're able to adjust a little bit, even the hole, the hole is not lined up. So you can uh, do a measurement and do an eyeball, it should be right in the middle and we should be fine so right now I'm one and a half here and one and a half there so I'm going to set the screw right there also it's important that this screw is screw on the fat surface of the shaft that is the key and that is what this instruction is about So on the fast surface. So this one you will find out is going in a little bit more because of the surface, fast surface. This one is stuck out a little bit more. After that do a spin test. Mine is a little bit wrinkle. I don't know what's wrong. And I don't want to take the time to put back the old one. So I just monitor and see what happened. So it's not really strict, strict. So when I do the test, it's 
a little bit not straight. I don't know whether it's the it's my new wheel or the old wheel is better. I'm not sure. Oh, this one is bent a little bit. I can't tell. So I'm going to uh, put back the old one. I saw this is bent. See, this one is bent. Definitely is bent. Okay, this is the old one because the new one didn't work. So the the old one is better. See, the new one turned left and white. So that's the old one. Okay, it's getting dark. So put back this plate, which is two screw here and one school here, one school there then I'm going to go back to the house and do the installation what a mess okay finally the whole thing able to put in you need to do some exercise before you do this job it's very hard to align back and in there there's a slot you have to go through and the top so when you don't have enough power to holding this it's hard to do so right now what I did is going to put back the motherboard two screw over there and then all the necessary wire this one go back to the hole and the free wire go through there and that's about it so one two three four motherboard the bracket the harness this wire and this one go back to that one and the full pipe and that's about it thank you for watching Please like, subscribe and comment. Okay, the motherboard, this tube, is going to hook up into that. And after that, you put the screw on top so you can hold on to it. So basically, you slide in all the way, and it was holding. And this is screw from here, and also the second screw from there. So, one screw. And one screw. And now we connect back to connector, red, black, and then white. You only go one way, so just turn it around if you have problem. And you should hear a kick sound, and that is good. Now I'm going to put back this one, and also the motherboard, which is on this. The back and white wire should only go one way because of the design of the connector. 
but if not, you just have to mix your black to black and white to white. Okay, that's done. And just to make sure it's all level on the motherboard. So it's all, all good. All level. Okay, now put back the cover for the full pipe. So there's four slots here, one, two, three, four, and then you go right there. And then one screw over there, right here. I'll line back with the hole. This unit have a hole and then the pipe have a hole. So just lying back. So the pie have a hole and this unit has a hole so that's where the screw go in. Okay line up the hole and then you put the screw in. You may want to press this together to make this pie go in. Okay the pie is in. By the way you wonder why the, this color on the screw and on the heater basically I want to identify all the screw for that particular part so so this section is orange the other one is yellow and so forth and so forth so this is the full pipe part okay put back the cover so two slot one slot go here And then after that, you align this and push that in. Basically, you just push this in. Just secure, and then you just push this in, and you secure by putting the two screw. The hole is lined up, so we just put the screw. Okay. Two screws secure and I'm going to put back this exhaust and we are done. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment. Okay, this is just some trick and tips. When I'm replacing the bore motor, the screw right here what you're looking at is really easy to drop on top of the bowl. Last time I dropped it two times. So be careful with it. And also, when you come down to here, in my case, I don't have a lot of leverage. Uh, if you cannot put your arm in there and lift it up like this, you can give it a try. Uh, it's much stronger because because the position I'm standing is very hard to lift up the motor and move it and slide that in. So last time I tried to do it this way by moving up the motor a little bit and you're able to slide in a little bit easier. But if not, what I did is eventually when I have to line up this boat right here, right there, and the bolt up there, I have a tough time. So what I did is, I used two pieces of wood to leverage this a little bit, a little bit by little, and then eventually you're able to line back to the hole. So this is the trick I did. So uh, hopefully you don't have that problem. But from where I stand and the position, I have to hold the motor this way. It's very difficult. Um, because the motor is at least 15, 20 pounds. So. And also, as I mentioned, the nut up there, be careful. I drop it down to the drum two times. And I have to use a magnet to fish it up. 
so that's all folks thank you for watching please like subscribe and comment see you next time Okay, this is the motor I removed, uh, but there's nothing wrong with the motor except the set screw is loose and it seems like it has been loose for a while because if you look, if you see the marking, it has been keep dropping down a little bit until you really know where to drop down and until you hit the rock bottom. So this is all the scratch mark as time go by. So I'm going to uh, uh, loop this up later and use it as a spare just in case for emergency. Just in case something like uh, COVID-19 embargo or all those situations. Just have a spare motor. Okay. And the first thing is I'm going to spike all this wire and basically connect just like this uh, based on the diagram uh, also in addition to that when you buy a new motor you're supposed to match the uh, model number in this case is HC45AE115A and, uh, and check all the spec such as the rotation the horsepower the cap everything should match your new motor but the most important thing is the M the M need to be matched this one is 11.1 .1. if you have an M even though the rotation the speed everything is the same but the M is not the same uh, you're asking for trouble because um, your motor will get hot and then burn out easily so the M is very important uh, even though the rest of the number the spec is the same but you definitely the M need to be addressed okay I'm going to spike this and see how it run but it's pretty smooth it's amazing when is made in USA it lasts for 33 years and still working except the sex screw is loose okay the wire is done so the two brown I connect to the cap which is the same spec as the Okay, I connect all the necessary wire. The cap is the same spec as uh, for this motor, um, which is here 10 and 570. And for the diagram, I did not connect the wet wire, which is low. I did not connect the blue which is the speed for medium low and I also did not connect the wire for the yellow which is medium high but I only connect the black for the testing purpose so uh, before you mount your motor if you have doubt whether it work so you can test it this way before you put in the motor install it make all this work and find out the motor is bad or have noise or have some other issue so you can pre-test this here rather than do the installation install to the furnace or heater connect all the motherboard connect all the full pipe and find out it's not working or have some issue so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to turn on this now and see what happened okay the motor is running 
and uh, let me see. So this is how you test it, and I'm going to oil it and see whether you will make less noise and use it as a backup. Okay, and also I also connect the uh, the green. Yeah, it's a little bit vibrate. So I'm lucky I got a new motor and changed it. And that motor is supposed to last for another 20 years. Thank you for watching. And if I spin it by hand, it didn't make much noise. Okay, I'm very lucky. This one have the pack for me to oil it. It may be it's an old motor. That's how they design. So all I have to do is drop about three to four drop of oil and you can use any oil i uh, using this one and some of them use uh, something called three in one so all i did is i carefully pie this up this way and this part come out and same thing on this one I have this way on every single angle slowly and this part is coming out so after that you take this out you put the oil on it and you press it down there's no screw no nothing just hammer a little bit and this should be good and uh, if for whatever reason you don't have this two oil port then you have to take off this four screw you should mark your use a marker or nail processor to mark the position where you remove it so you can put back the same way and same same thing on the back you mark it with a sharp object or or a marker or a label so you can put back the same thing and the oil oil thing they have a sponge in here so holding the oil and same at the back holding the oil in there so uh, if you keep this up at least you can wait for the part to come within a few weeks or and uh, at least you have either hot air or cold air for that few weeks thank you for watching please like and subscribe and comment and i will put uh, down certain tricks i did on this furnace so you can avoid all the issues those are tips please stay tuned Okay, this is back. Okay, that's good. That's about three, four jobs. And after that, you can keep spinning this. You see much smoother now.
and also before I when I test this motor you should also pay attention to the rotation to make sure you indicate rotate exactly like your label so if your rotation is wrong then you are not going to install it when you really put in the uh, the power to the you know to the wire and that is how you do the p testing